Well, whether it was sarcasm or a veiled threat, Donald Trump has once again lobbed what many see as an incendiary declaration on gun control. Speaking in Miami, Trump apparently went off script and said Hillary Clinton's Secret Service bodyguards should be stripped of their weapons. And then Trump went even further. Have a listen. Immediately, what do you think? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Take their guns away. She doesn't want guns. Take their, let's see what happens to her. Take their guns away. Okay. It'll be very dangerous. Trump's incendiary comments and his latest attempt to link his opponent to gun control positions that she doesn't hold brought a quick response from the Clinton camp. In this statement, Clinton's campaign manager blasted Trump, saying he has a pattern of inciting people to violence. Whether this is done to provoke protesters at a rally or casually or even as a joke, it is unacceptable quality in anyone seeking the job of commander-in-chief. This kind of talk should be out of bounds for a presidential candidate. Well, with his thoughts on Trump's comments and the issue of gun control in the U.S., let's turn to John Lott. He's a gun crime researcher and the author of The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies, and More Guns, Less Crime, Understanding Crime and Gun Control Laws. He joins me from Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. John, welcome to you. Nice to talk to you, Carol. Thank oh, you. Okay, what do you make of Donald Trump's comments that Hillary Clinton's bodyguards should disarm? Well, it's a rhetorical comment, obviously. He's not advocating that they actually be disarmed. He's pointing out that there's a reason why Hillary Clinton wants to have armed bodyguards. There's a reason why other politicians or wealthy individuals like to have armed bodyguards, because they believe that having guns protect them and make them safer. Yep. And the comment that he's trying to make is that politicians such as Hillary Clinton want to have rules that disarm the general public or particularly make it hard for poor people, particularly poor minorities who live in high crime urban areas to have guns. But they would never do the same thing for themselves. They understand the benefit of guns when it comes to protecting themselves, just not others. Okay. Clinton has been on this campaign trail. Here's what she's been saying. She's not talking about eradicating guns completely. One of her main lines, uh, John, is that, the, that if you're on a terrorist watch list and you can't get on a plane, then you shouldn't be allowed to go and buy a gun. Okay. Well, first of all, the first statement isn't obviously true. What she wants to do is to overturn recent Supreme Court decisions by appointing judges to the courts who would go and say it's perfectly fine for the government to go and ban guns. The Heller decision in 2008, the only thing that the Supreme Court said there was that the government could not completely ban guns. And that's the decision she wants to overturn. So how do you know she wants she to overturn that? That 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 she you think she wants a blanket gun ban in the United States? Something she has not said on the campaign trail. I, did, I didn't say that it would be a blanket gun ban. What I said was that you'd have places in the United States, like uh, Washington D.C., Chicago, possibly, and likely California, with regard to handguns which would ban either all guns or ban large categories of guns. And by having her way with regard to the Supreme Court there, she would accomplish those bans. Do you think that there should be some limits put on gun ownership in the United States? Well, you know, everybody wants to try to keep criminals or bad people from getting guns. But what needs to be recognized is the current system is a complete mess. You know, Hillary Clinton will go and say that background checks have stopped 2.4 million dangerous, prohibited people from obtaining guns. But that's not correct. What she should say is that there have been 2.4 million denials and initial denials, and that virtually all those have been mistakes. So I'll give you a simple example. The late Senator Ted Kennedy, five times he tried to fly, but was stopped from flying because he had a name similar to somebody who was on the no-fly list. Would we count that as five times we stopped a terrorist from flying? Presumably not. But that's the way they count them when they're talking about those 2.4 million people. 99% of those 
are law-abiding citizens who should have been able to buy a gun but were stopped simply because they had a name similar to a felon or somebody else that the government wanted to stop. And the problem is, when you're stopping that many people, you may have a small but significant number of those people who may have really needed a gun quickly for self-defense, but were stopped from doing so. And even worse, the people who are being stopped are overwhelmingly minorities. Blacks and Hispanics are the ones where virtually all the mistakes are occurring. Why do so many people get killed by guns in your country? Well, it's not, it's below the average for the world. It's below the median and the average. But look, but oh, oh, just on that point, though, like, I mean, it, we see it in Canada every day. We're watching what's happening in your country. And, right. and it's really sad. I mean, it's really sad. The U.S. represents this, is according to The Wall Street Journal, the U.S. represents less than 5 percent of the 7.3 billion global population. However, it accounted for 31 percent of global mass shootings during the period from 1966 to 2012, more than any other country. You're that's, way over-represented. Okay, no. okay, first of all, that's false. The person who put that together will not release the list of cases that they have. They will not release how they, they put that together. You can't rely on information if the researcher is unwilling to let anybody check what they've done. I have gone through and looked at all the mass public shootings in the, in the world from 1970 until um, March of this year. And what you find is that the United States is actually less than the world average. Uh, if you look, if you take the FBI definition of mass public shootings, for example, just during the Obama administration, you have the same number of mass public shootings in Europe, in the European Union, as you have in the United States, 25 cases in which four more people were killed in a public place. And if you look at the casualty rate, per capita, it's actually 50% higher in Europe than it is in the United States. France alone last year had 532 casualties from, mass, from the four mass public shootings that they have. During the entire seven year, first seven years of the Obama administration, there were 396 people killed. But and people can go to my book, The War on Guns, and I have a list of each case, and they can yeah. check out each case that's According there. to the mass shooting tracker, and this was plotted with PBS NewsHour as well, um, which defines a mass shooting as an incident in which four people were killed or wounded. There were 372 mass shootings in the United States in 2015, killing 475, wounding 1,870. What's, what's going on with your country? Okay. Well, what I was trying to say before is the big problem that we have with drug gangs overwhelming majority of those, the vast majority of those cases that you're just pointing were drug gang fights. We have a real okay. drug gang problem. But the, but the issue is, look how hard it's been to stop the drug gangs from getting a hold of drugs. Do you think it's any easier to stop the drug gangs from getting a hold of guns? If I could click my fingers right now and cause all illegal drugs to disappear from the United States and all guns, how long do you think it would take before illegal drugs started coming back in? 20 minutes, a half hour? You know, it's not like a drug gang can go to the police and say, look, this other gang stole our drugs. Can you go and help us get them back? These gangs have to go and put together their own militaries, and they'll bring in the guns just as easily and at the same time as they bring in the illegal drugs. And, you know, what most people don't realize is that it's just as easy. The same organizations that supply illegal drugs are the same ones that supply illegal guns to other people. All right. Well, we have to leave it there with you, John. John Lott is, the, is with the Crime Prevention Research Center. Uh, he spoke with us from Swarthmore, uh, Pennsylvania. John, thank you very much. You're watching thank CBC you. News Network. We'll be right back.